Hey, what's up guys? This is Brian from Whisper Status 74 and this video is going to be about micro LED. It will be a shorter video, shorter than my normal videos. Um, you can see behind me is Vincent from HDTV Test who did Sony's Crystal LED. Here's the Crystal LED. Yeah, Crystal LED, which is Sony's um, version of Samsung's micro LED that a lot of you guys are very excited about and very fearful of. And I'm going to give you just my take on it. Now, to explain it a little bit further, excited... Um, a lot of you cannot wait for micro LED for what it has to offer and all of its pros. There are no cons at this point other than probably price and many of you are waiting for it. So you fall into two camps in the channel or in the community. There is excitement. Excitement for what micro LED offers. Now my analogy for micro LED is it's the blade of televisions. So think about the vampire blade. It has all the strengths of LED all the strengths of OLED and none of the weaknesses of either. So think about it in terms of being an OLED as far as, you know, it's, it's pixel but not organic, meaning it won't burn out, it won't get older, it won't, it won't die out and there is no burn-in. But it also has the blacks of OLED, meaning it shuts off at the pixel level and it also um, has the brightness of LED, meaning they'll be hitting over a thousand nits with an OLED like picture, which would give you the strengths of OLED with none of the weaknesses of OLED, or um, strengths of, yeah, strength of OLED with none of the weaknesses of OLED being burning and pixel, you know, kind of rotting out and dying, as well as image retention, and then all the strengths of LED without any of the blooming, without any of the problems and the banding that you see with LED. So, is it too good to be true? We're gonna have to wait and see. But videos like this one from Vincent, who is, you know, great showing you a you know a hundred something itch inch Sony micro LED or some of the digital trends videos of Samsung's of the wall from a couple of years ago and some of the other videos that I've shown you Samsung's you know micro LED at 75 but they were able to merge them together to create more of a commercial display think about it for corporate and concerts things of that nature um, but the challenge is a lot of you guys are freaked out and excited the fearful group is i just bought an oled i just bought this is this new technology going to come out and blow it away always going to be the exact opposite of what we talked about the other day with early adopters you know am i buying this too soon um should i wait or am i too late there's also a group um, that's the opposite of early adopters that waits and literally can wait. So let's just say this. You haven't jumped into 4K yet. Um, 4K has been out since 2014, probably 2014, 2013, you know, as far as early adopters. Then there's a group that is like, I'm going to wait, I'm going to wait, wait for Michael LED. Well, the thing is you can find yourself waiting and miss 4K entirely. Now that's fine. Patience is an absolute virtue. You can choose to do that. You don't lose anything, but you would lose out on tons of content that we have now in terms of gaming and so there is that area where you can wait and wait and wait and never get anything and if you're okay with that then that's completely fine so we'll address the fearful camp first those of you that just bought OLEDs and bought new QLEDs that are saying I can't believe I bought that look at this thing it's gonna be awesome it's gonna be a thousand nits completely black everything he's saying is fantastic and in all of these videos that you watch love Vincent love those channels Vincent will bring up the price a lot of times even with the Z9G yeah we can't wait for it now we get into like $70,000 price tag you're like oh okay that's not even realistic um, read the comments on this video I'll actually I'll link it in the description below people are saying they want a starship for that much money we're talking about consumer guys so with the micro LED from Samsung it was over a hundred inches the wall I believe it was it might have been larger and then it got down to 75 inches, and it was a display you can combine. Um, so 75 inches got people very excited. These can, things could be dropping any day. Okay, um, that was last year. We still haven't seen it. We still don't see it. Do I think that's part of Samsung's master plan? I do. I think their LED market is very strong. I think they haven't done OLED simply because, you know, they have... They actually have micro LED right there. They, they know what OLEDs can do for their phone market. They know the shortcomings of it. They're thinking micro LED. When's it going to come? Well, we don't know. But here's the thing. If you look at what happened with uh, OLED. So let's talk about, we're going to go back really quick. 
Right now, we're looking at 75-inch TVs, LEDs, are somewhat affordable. Your TCLs, your Hisense, some of your Vizios, they're getting to be realistic. Only a few years ago, 55 inches was big. 65 inches, when I bought my Panasonic, uh, plasma was gigantic. So now we finally got to the point where these large displays can be owned for $1,000, even less. So we're in this area. We had the same situation with 1080p displays when they, we had a sharp TV, some of them are really big. If you remember the 1080p displays as 4K was launching. Then 4K launched and all of a sudden the 55 inch 4K TVs were very expensive and your LEDs at 1080p were much cheaper. OLED came in, same thing. A small OLED costs unreachable prices compared to an LED. My point being is that say micro LED does launch next year, 2020. It's not going to be priced at what you just spent on your OLED or on your, it probably won't even be close. Meaning, and I don't know this, is just my opinion and that's all we're talking about here guys is our opinions. The initial micro LEDs are probably going to be so expensive, you probably won't be able to afford them anyway. So say we do say, I'm not buying this TV, I'm going to wait for a micro LED. You wait patiently and the 55 inch micro LED drops and it's $7,000. But your 77 inch OLED is now five. Do you see where I'm going with it guys? So if it does in fact drop next year, unless you're an early adopter where you're trying to figure out when to grab it, my point is I don't think you should be afraid of it. Um, it would still be a few years before it's actually able to really truly be utilized. Um, and you might find yourself waiting two or three years. In my opinion, a new display that you're buying now might last you three to four years. And then in four years, if you feel like micro LED has become more reasonable, then grab it. So I'm speaking to those of you that just bought displays or looking to buy them. I wouldn't be afraid of micro LED. If we were seeing consumer versions now, and we had um, price points that were reasonable, I would say, yeah, you know, hold off and wait. They're dropping next year, and they're going to be $1,000. I have a feeling if they, for some reason, do drop them next year, being a consumer brand, from what I'm seeing with the Crystal LED, this thing is not ready to be sold at your nearest Best Buy. And it wouldn't be within reason expensive. This is 100 inches. If it was shrunk down to 75 inches, I don't see that being affordable for any of us realistically. And... That's kind of my thought on micro LED. Am, am I excited? I am as excited as you are. I am as thrilled as you are to see a display that can do both LED and OLED and the blade of TVs. All of their strengths, none of their weaknesses, but being realistic, guys, they're not dropping tomorrow. And if they do drop in 2020, I highly doubt they're going to be affordable. Could you imagine a display that has all the strengths, none of the weaknesses, and it's cheaper than an OLED? Again, my opinion, it probably won't be. It's probably going to be unreachable for many of us. When OLED first dropped, think about how expensive it was for a tiny OLED when you had an LED right next to it that was, you know, 20 inches larger. A lot of you were like, yeah, but this one is trying to get here. And look how much, how far OLED has come from when it first started. Now, like any other prototype or not vaporware, I don't want to say that, but any other technology that we're very excited about, all we hear are the pros. As of right now, micro LED doesn't have a single con except for the fact that it's going to be expensive. It's almost nearly impossible that it doesn't have any flaws. Um, you don't see them looking at these displays talking about is there any screen uniformity issues? Is there any banding? Is there any anything? They're, you know, they're saying that the pixels will last infinitely. Well, how do we know? They haven't released any yet. So my point is, is keep temper your excitement and your fear and wait and be happy with what you have. And I would still go ahead and purchase what display you're going to purchase. What I say, go spend $17,000 on a master OLED. I mean, I wouldn't recommend that anyway, but I wouldn't be quick to return your TVs. Enjoy these videos from these guys. I mean, they are exciting. Think about them as a prototype car that isn't quite out yet. And also think about those prototype cars. Sometimes when they actually do get to launch two or three years later, they're not always what they showed a few years ago. And try to keep your 
um, your excitement just realistic and realize that even though these things are releasing, as exciting as they are, I promise you there will be some flaws to them. We just don't know what they are yet. So if you want to wait and be patient, there's nothing wrong with it. Wait as long as you feel you're... For me, I would feel that I'm missing out on amazing gaming with uh, PC and consoles right now, with uh, PS4 Pro even already, Xbox One X, the new consoles coming out, the new GPUs coming out, the new Ryzen CPUs coming out, all the Blu-rays, all the streaming. Right now, I feel like 4K is really hitting its stride and there is so much to watch versus when it first came out. That's why I'm not super thrilled with 8K jumping in before 12-bit. Um, I think 12-bit will also jump in there. So we have a lot of new technologies coming out. But you have to say to yourself, if you bought a brand new display, are you going to be pretty happy with it? And will that sustain you? For me, we talked about what I have now. I'm pretty good with it. If I do purchase an OLED or I do purchase the Vizio, I'm not going to regret not purchasing this other like micro LED in next year. Now, I'm not going to say in two or three years, I won't say, wow, that's going to be awesome. But I promise you, if I was to buy a 77-inch OLED right now, and I loved it. And then next year they release a 55 inch micro LED that is 2000 nits and has OLED blacks. I wouldn't trade in a 77 inch OLED for a 55 inch micro LED. That's just me personally. I wouldn't go backwards in size. I wouldn't trade in this TV for a really crisp monitor either. So it's all about what's important to you, but I wouldn't be afraid of it. I would be excited about it. But a lot of you guys are actually losing sleep about it, and you're asking me about it. Did I make a mistake? Um, should I can't to the point to where, when you guys see a video like this, some of you, and there's nothing wrong with that. I understand you guys are concerned. You're saying, should I cancel my order? And again, I have nothing to gain. I'm not selling you any of these things. But this is just us talking. Be excited, but don't be scared or fearful or too cautious. Um, you should always be cautious, but don't be so nervous where it's going to ruin your experience. Crack open that carton of your display, enjoy it. Hopefully it's not defective and it works properly. And then just kind of disconnect from me, disconnect from all of this stuff and just enjoy your displays for a little bit. Looking to the next thing constantly is totally robbing you of that present moment. I mean, enjoy the displays that you have and the ones that you're purchasing. You know, so yeah, if you're worried about HDMI 2.1, that's realistic. You want to wait till next year, that's realistic. You want 8K, you want to wait till next year, that's realistic. It's coming. Will it be utilized? I don't know, but that's something that's reasonable. Micro LED right now is kind of the boogeyman out there that everybody is excited of and scared, um, excited for and scared of. I would be, you know, kind of in the middle. Be excited, enjoy these videos, the wow factor, but right now they're just not realistic. In my opinion, they're not showing up tomorrow. And if they did, they wouldn't be affordable anyway, guys. Again, look at size. The display you have now, whatever size it is, go probably smaller than that. And a micro LED version will cost more than the display you're looking at larger. And um, I can't see for myself going smaller, especially since we're going 4K and 8K. Why would we go smaller? We're looking to go a little bit larger with these displays so we can see the true benefit of the extra resolution and pixel density. All right, guys, I am Brian at WhisperStatus74. I look for your comments below. I am catching up on the comments for the last four videos. I will definitely get back to you guys. If I don't get back to you, resubmit your question, please, and thank you so much. Let me know what you think about micro LED. Are you somebody that's waiting for it? Are you kind of fearful of it? Do you feel like you're going to have buyer's remorse? Let me know, and I will talk to you soon. Take care.